How many people here have, have never made a search for, or <clears throat> I'll put it the other way around, how many have made a search for patent documents before? Yeah, about 50-50 again. So we have half the people in the room who've never made a patent search and half who have. So I'm, I apologize for those who have already worked with patent searching. Uh, some parts of this might be a little bit, uh, well, you already know, but uh, for others of you, um, Perhaps I think it would be good to give an introduction. As was mentioned in the earlier presentations, there is something of a deal, a public-private deal, if you like. When, when the exclusionary right for a patent is granted, I say exclusionary, specific, very carefully chosen word, exclusionary, because you have the right to exclude others. There's nothing like... Um, a patent police who will go and enforce your patent for you. If you have a patent that's been granted, that's valid, you have the right to then take an action in the courts to have that patent enforced, to stop others from copying. Exclusionary means you actually have to do something. What part of the deal is that in exchange for this exclusionary right, you have to makes what, what <clears throat> make what's called an enabling disclosure. In other words, you have to write down on a piece of paper a detailed description of your invention. And it may sound like um, a little bit of an, an abstract point, but actually um, I, I think it's important to really understand this point and to think about it. What does it mean? to write down a description of your invention. In, in the country I come from, England, uh, we had a patent law reform back in the 1850s. Before the patent law reform, if you look at the literature and the scholarly articles on patenting, people would have been very surprised if you'd have talked about making, uh, uh, separating the patent from the object People were very much focused on objects. As it was only around the middle of the 19th century in England and maybe earlier in some other places that we really started to separate the right from, from the object itself. And now the whole patent is really embodied in this description. So if you haven't described and claimed what you want protected in the document, then it's not protected. You can't just show a copy of the physical thing and say, this is what I want protected. That doesn't work. You have to write it down. And that has huge consequences for searching. Because then when you want to search for patented material, you need to start using techniques which are well adapted to this written description approach. So things like keywords, things like patent classification, you know, another question for you. Anybody here heard of the International Patent Classification, the IPC? Well, okay, down a little bit now. How about the Cooperative Patent Classification? Oh, down even more. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit.